Hello and welcome to the Sword and Shield in Monster Hunter World. This guide will cover most of the important stuff that you need to know to master this weapon. If you are new to SNS, stay tuned and we will begin with the basic combos and other useful information. For players with some experience using it, we will also cover some advanced moves and mechanics. So, hopefully, you can still learn a new thing or two. I will add timestamps in the description if you want to skip or are only interested in a particular topic. First, let's do a quick recap of the evolution of S and S. In base world, essentially, we have two different styles. The pure slash style that focus only on sword ground combos, and the other style was the aerial shield patch. Now, in Iceborne, we got an incredible new combo, the perfect rush. In the first couple of months after the expansion was released, it was, for the most part, a neglected combo. But after the Stygian Sinogre patch, it received a huge damage boost and now is basically the top tire move for SNS. Another nice addition was the Glow Uppercut that now can tenderize parts really quick. With the SNS, sword attacks can deal elemental and status damage, but the shield does not, and there are some moves and good combos that use the shield as an offensive tool. These moves will barely benefit from your elemental damage, so you will probably want more row in some cases. Actually, you will want more row in most cases. It all depends in what playstyle you are going to focus on. For a pure sword slash style, hike element along with Silver Rattalos Mastery, aka True Critical Element can give you nice results with monsters with really high elemental weakness. For example, Yangaruga, Tigrex, Nargakuga or Devil Yo. But some late monsters are not particularly weak to element. This is the case of Nargigante, Charish Balda, Sinogre, Stygian Sinogre. High Grau combined with Blast Status is way more useful for those specific monsters. This kind of elemental builds were meta prestigious patch and actually compete against pure raw builds, but now it was left behind. It's not that they were nerfed, they stay the same as before, but the perfect rush was busted beyond the wildest imagination of any veteran SNS user. There is another new variant of this elemental build with three Safijiba armor pieces and two pieces of Belkana, but the difference is barely noticeable and both builds fall behind any set that optimizes the perfect rush. If your playstyle is going to focus exclusively on the Falling Bash or the Perfect Rush, Raw Damage is the way to go, even if you use an Elemental S and S. And in a lot of cases, you should use all of them if you want the most optimal DPS. The skills you want to get are the ones that give you more physical attack like Attack Boost, Agitator, Big Performance, or resentment. The last one only if you are using the Safijiba Mastery with that specific armor set. Now let's move on to the basic moves and mechanics. How to unseat the weapon. If you stay still and press triangle, your character will unseat the sword. Attacking with triangle while moving the joystick in any direction will pull off this attack called Advancing Slash. It's a good cap closing combo starter. When your weapon is already out, you can perform the same move by pressing triangle and circle at the same time. 
Stay still and press R2 to unseat with your shield up. Use this if you think you are not going to be able to dodge an incoming monster attack. Press R2 and triangle at the same time to execute a quick attack that keeps you in place. It's called Rising Slash. After that, you can continue your combos. Press R2 and circle to do an horizontal slash. This move is bad and doesn't let you chain it into a combo. My advice is, learn this mechanic first and then try to avoid it all the time. I would like to talk now about the shield as an offensive and defensive tool. You have a shield which is good to put up in emergencies and will mitigate a lot of your damage, but you are not a tank. Strong hits can deplete a lot of your stamina and multi-hit incoming attacks can interrupt your movement more than a couple of seconds. I recommend working on being more mobile and evasive than a blocker. Be aware, in order to block some special moves, you will need the shield jewel for the guard up skill. Some of the moves that require this skill are the Ostra Supernova, Belkana's Eye Spread, Kirin Straight Heavy Lightning Bolt, Senojiba Horizontal Laser Beam, Cool Tarot Fire Breath, and Chara Isbalda Unarmored Form Wind Attacks. Now I would like to talk about the shield as an offensive tool. While the sword applies slashing damage and therefore can cut tails, the shield does blunt damage. The two strongest row combos, the falling bash and the perfect rush, make use of both. But the former relies too much on the blunt damage. That's why you need to know the most optimal hit zones of all the monsters to get the best results. For example, let's look at Safijiba hit zones. The four legs take great slash damage, while the hind legs are weak to blunt damage. Take a look at my hunter hitting Safi's hind legs with the perfect rush. Can you see the grey and orange numbers? The grey ones are sludge damage, and the orange numbers are blunt damage. With moves like the falling bash, this is really important because the two strongest hits are with the shield and usually you want to go for the head. Except with some exceptions like Behemoth Hind Legs or the already mentioned Safijiba Hind Legs. I will cover later in more depth all the SNS moves I keep mentioning here. Another advantage of shield attacks is that they never bounce or lose sharpness. You can hit the training pole with directional circle for days and keep your maximum sharpness. To perform it, simply press circle with the left joystick pointing at any direction. This combo is really bad for DPS, never spam it. I recommend doing it only when you want to proc IKO. I'm just showing it as an example. More into the possibilities of KO and mounting with SNS later. On a side note, all chill attacks also deal exhaust damage. But don't bother building for stamina thief, it's a passive skill with barely any benefit and completely useless against elder dragons. With SNS, you can also use items with your weapon drawn. This is achieved by holding guard R2 plus square, which will use whichever item you currently have select on the item bar. In my experience, this is more useful to put down traps, bombs or to equip very quickly your slinger bots. For healing, 
keep in mind you will move slower while chugging some stuff like potions or mega potions, so you are better simply putting off your weapon before using those. In the older games, the animation of consumable items was the same for everything, therefore was a bit more useful than SNS World's version. Now, let's cover the use of Slinger Ammo. Like all the weapons in the game, you can aim your Slinger Ammo with L2 and then shoot with R2, it doesn't matter if your weapon is round or not. But the SNS have two different kinds of slinger shots, the regular one and the slinger burst. You can switch between them using the R3 button while aiming. That will be pressing the right joystick of the controller. The slinger burst also can make some monsters flinch. Use these tools to control the fight or help your allies. Let's cover some of the basic sword attacks. You can use the triangle and circle buttons. You can view them as light and strong attacks, but in comparison to other weapons, both are really fast. If you press triangle non-stop, you will reach a moment where the combo ends. After that, you can chain the triangle combo with three more attacks with circle. Pressing triangle and circle at the same time mid combo will instantly make you perform the round slash. The same move you can do at the end of the circle combo chain. It's the strongest sword attack, but also the slowest one. That's why we can see it as a finisher combo move. Spamming only, the triangle button is not optimal. The sword combos can be summarized in the minigame called Avoid that clunky elbow strike with the shield. That will be the third hit of the triangle combo, because it's slow, interrupts your combo flow, and the damage is just bad. Most of the sword play circles around the idea of avoiding this move and pull off different kinds of infinite combos. We will cover all of them in the last part of the video, but the basic notion is that after any action with your sword, you can turn around using the spiral slash. By moving a little bit the position your character is facing using the left joystick and that will reset your sword combo, something that you can repeat over and over again. You don't even need to make a huge 180 turn, a small tilt to one of your sides will work. In other words, SNS can pull off infinite combos, practice and take this as a starting point. Dominate the spiral slash to turn and reset your combo and get used to the basic attacks before jumping into more specific movements that we will cover here. The most basic way to perform a back hop is to start any sword combo even a single hit will work, and then press back on your left joystick while holding the circle button and then release it. Talking about sword combos, if you finish the whole chain of 3 circles, the next circle will automatically start the back hop. After the back hop, you will have 5 different options. A. Jumping slash. After holding and release the circle button, press triangle on mid-air. A downward sword attack that applies mounting damage. B. Falling badge. After holding and release the circle button, 
press circle again on mid air. C. Perfect rush. Instead of holding circle until the jumping animation begins, press triangle before to start this combo. D. Advancing slash. Don't hold circle, simple let go of the buttons, don't press any other input after the backstep animation begins. E. Backhop cancel. Press back again using the left joystick to cancel the jump animation. You will do a rising slash instead. The backhop is also a very useful evasion tool. It has 25 iframes, way more than a regular dodge. No other weapon has all those evading frames except for the longsword for slight slash. They can even go higher with the bay window skill or the evasion mantle. Now it's time to go deeper into the possibilities of mounting and KO damage. After a pack hop, press triangle in the air, that single sword attack will do mounting damage. Note that the falling batch with circle will not do any mounting damage, only the downward triangle slash on mid air does. Take advantage of ledges to do even more additional mounting damage or make use of some specific walls that you can use to perform a special attack that deal multiple hits in the air. To perform this move, do an advancing slash, triangle with your weapon seated, or triangle and circle at the same time if your weapon is already drawn, in the direction of that special wall. The mounting damage on this is insane and really fun to pull it off. Another great way to mount is when you are sliding, press triangle and notice that all the subsequent hits will do mounting damage, even when you are still sliding. If you want to cancel the sliding and with SNS, this can be sometimes annoying cause it happens a lot. Simple press X and your character will stop sliding. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the sword can apply elemental or status damage while the shield does not. But the shield can apply KO damage. Be aware, you probably won't get as much KO procs as the hammer or the sticky ammo bow guns. You can expect to see one KO in a multiplier quest or two if you are pretty good or go playing solo. Of course, it depends on the monster. The impact mantle is a valuable tool to proc all your KO faster. Also, don't underestimate the slinger bars with your slinger ammo. When you got a turn pot at hand, you can easily get your freeze KO in just a couple of seconds. The Falling Batch is one of the easiest moves to execute in the whole game. It consists of four different hits, two with the sword and two hits with the shield that additionally does blunt damage. To perform it, first do a back hop and then press circle again in the air. The real difficulty of this move lies on precision, terrain difficulties and the problems to actually connect all the four hits when a monster part is flying really high above the ground, like wings and some monster heads. Like we mentioned before, the falling patch benefits more from raw, so 
build this style taking that into account. This is a great move when the monster has fallen to the ground or is immobile. You can spam it over and over pressing the same button sequence. Back holding circle with another circle on the air. It can also combo very nicely with the perfect rush. According to the hunter's notes, in order to perform the perfect rush, you need to aim with your slinger, do a slinger boss with R2 and next press triangle to start the combo. After this, simply spamming the triangle button will do the whole move, but timing is important to get the best damage. After the back hop, you only really need 3 inputs. You will receive a visual and sound cue when it's time to press triangle again. Simple, watch for the position of your left and right elbows and you will get it right after a couple of tries and some practice. But you can also initiate this move without any slinger ammo at hand. Just like the falling bat. This is the way to do it. After any combo, press circle and back with the left joystick to start the back hop. Before the jumping animation starts. Instead of holding circle, you will push triangle, that way you will perform the perfect rush. There are more ways to initiate this combo and the falling bash, but practice the basics and the correct timing first. We will cover the rest of possibilities on the advanced moves section. I already talked about how powerful is this move after the Stygian patch. Right now it outperforms everything else the SNS is capable to do. So if you see a big opening or the monster is down, go for the perfect rush. It's not only the best SNS combo in terms of damage but one of the highest DPS melee combos in the whole game. I will not cover builds in depth here, cause that's a subject that will extend the length of this document a lot. We can talk about that another time, but basically there are three perfect rush builds that are really popular right now. A. The Master Stoge meta set that every other raw weapon player usually plays. Infinite sharpness thanks to 3 Theosra pieces, Affinity, Crit Boost, Attack Boost, Agitator, and Big Performance. B. A mix of 2 Theostra and 3 Safijiba armor pieces with one Theostra Essence in the Awakened Ability slots of a Safijiba weapon. This gives you the advantage and the special abilities of both armor sets, Master Stoge and Safijiba Seal. C. The Frostcraft Build Using three pieces of Belkana with one Awakened Ability Slot going for Balkana's Essence in the weapon. The rest of the abilities goes for DPS skills. There's no Master Stoge here, so the regular sword combos are usually avoided. To execute the glow uppercut, simply roll in the direction you want with X and then press L2. 
before the latest patches it was pretty much useless, but now it can tenderize parts really quick. If you or another player with a light weapon already tried to tenderize with a regular attack with the claw, you only need the very first animation, the claw grab, and you can let go cause the work is already done. With a special monster like Safijiba, you can even tenderize two parts at once. First, grab one of Safi legs using the claw uppercut. Now move to another leg using the left joystick. Press triangle to attack and, as you can see, both legs will be tenderized. The startup of this movement got super armor and ear plugs. It's like a rocksteady effect. It only lasts for a second, but you can use it to dodge monster rock. It is time that we cover some advanced moves. How to initiate the backhop without any additional attacks. There's a very useful combination of buttons that allows you to perform a backhop without the need of any additional attack. Press the R2 button quickly and a small fraction of a second later, press circle with the joystick facing to the back of your character. The timing is a bit tricky at first, but you will get the hang of it. Another easy way to back up is to simply dodge and then press circle. It will start the animation right away. This is also a good way to cancel the perfect rush in the middle of the combo and start it all over again for more damage with that the need to reposition yourself. This dodge circle mechanic also works for the falling bash, so you can use it anytime you need for two of the best row damage combos. Dodge and then back up in the opposite direction or any direction you want. This is a tricky one to achieve it. Simple roll and just a little bit before the rolling animation ends, use the circle button with the left joystick in the direction you want. Probably you are not going to use this mechanic a lot, but it can come handy once in a while. How to roll and unseat the weapon the same time. This is achieved by pressing R2 very quick and a small fraction of a second later press the X button to roll. What happens is you are pressing the guard button but at the same time cancelling with a dodge. This is very useful to execute the claw uppercut without the need to stop your character or perform an attack beforehand. You will need three inputs to achieve this. R2 plus X plus L2. You are not restricted only to the claw uppercut. After you execute this roll on seat mechanic, you can do all kinds of different attacks. Sword combos, falling bash, perfect rush, there are a lot of possibilities. Now let's cover the rest of the sword combos. I'm putting this in the advanced section because this style of playing will require some practice to get the hang of it. In comparison to Falling Bash 
and the perfect rush are really simple. If I already told you that the perfect rush is superior to everything, why would you bother with the sword? Well, when a monster is flying over and over or just jumping all over the place, the falling bash can be useless and the perfect rush is slow to pull off. In contrast, the sword combos are fast. You can stop anytime and reposition yourself almost immediately. The sword style is neat, complex and really fun to use. Let's suppose a monster like Behemoth comes to master rank, or that same devilish looking dog eventually appears again. You wanna solo it? Then you better learn to use the sword properly, cause 70% or more of the damage will come from the sword combos. For most monsters in Iceborne, these combos will serve you, at least, as in-between damage for when you actually have the chance to pull off the strongest ones. There are a lot of combinations you can pull off with the sword combos, and the damage between all of them is not separated by a huge gap. I have never seen sword and shield speedrunners using exactly the same button combination over and over again. Having said that, the sword hits with circle always puts higher numbers than the ones with triangle. Triangle attacks get more benefit from high elemental damage, but the attacks with the circle button won't benefit as much. That's another reason some players avoid pure elemental builds. It's your choice what combos are you gonna focus on, but as a general advice, if your weapon has no element at all, then use the circle attacks more than the triangle. The strongest of all the triangle attacks is the thrust. That will always be the second attack after you make a quick turn using the spiral slash to reset the combo. Like I said before, the sword combos can be summarized in the minigame called Avoid that clunky elbow strike with the shield. The question is, how many triangles can you do before that ugly movement? This is where it gets complex, cause it varies. If you are completely still, then you can only do two triangles. If you do a spiral slash turn to reset the combo, then you can now use four triangles in a row. But there's a different combination that allows you to use only three triangles in a row. It's a combo that keeps you in place and was used a lot in the older Monster Hunter games. This is how you do it. Press R2, the guard button, and a tiny fraction of a second later, press triangle. This attack is called Rising Slash. Starting a combo this way allows you to use three triangle attacks, and then you can follow with the circle combos. The same three triangle attacks can also be executed by doing a roll first and then begin doing the combo. Starting from here, you can experiment and combine every single triangle and circle attack in any order you want.
content creators Jin Jinx and Tuna, in collaboration with Maestro Nuts, worked together on a video tutorial about SNS, along with the help of other members of the Monster Hunter community and coined fancy names to some of the most used sword combos, the round slash combo, the waltz combo, and the legacy combo. The round slash combo is performed using triangle triangle, circle circle circle, spiral slash to left or right to reset and repeat the sequence. The last circle can be spared sometimes or be used as a finisher. This combo works best for high row SNS. The words combo is performed using triangle triangle and spiral slash to left or right and then four triangles and repeat the last chain. From here, you simply repeat those four triangles and reset with spiral slash. This combo works better for high elemental S and S. And finally, the legacy combo is executed using triangle, triangle, with circle, circle, and spiral slash to left or right, and then you do four triangles, followed by circle, circle, spiral slash to left or right, and repeat the last chain. This combo is basically using all the different hits that the sword alone can pull off. Mostly use it when you don't want to reposition at all. These advanced combos are a pretty good starting point to get the best of this weapon. Sometimes you took all for one combo and half from another. It all depends of the situation and positioning. Remember to take advantage of the advancing slash to close the gap between you and the monster. After that move, you can combo into any attack button, but the circle chain is recommended. For example, you can follow with just one hit or go full into the circle attacks of the round slash combo and then reset to triangle using the spiral slash. Thanks for watching. I really hope some players can find this guide a bit useful for their own hunting quest and countless farming hours.